everybody. We're here again with Off the Highway, and we're going off the highway with that guy right there. That is John Huckins, author of the phenomenal book, Thin mm -hmm. Places. There you go, John Huckins. Good to see you, pal. Indeed. Good to see you, my friend. John, um, you know, uh, I grew up in a conservative church, and um, so often the uh, Middle Eastern conflict, particularly Israel and Palestine, has been framed in a pro-Israeli sort of way. Just wonder yeah. if you could comment a little bit on your perspective on sort of the Palestinian side of that conflict in light of your work in global peace. Yeah, uh, I immediately think of a moment on top of a hotel in the old city of Jerusalem in the Christian quarter overlooking Herod's palace. My wife and I were there for uh, a summer studying it, part of my graduate studies on the historical context of Jesus. Just a riveting like academic geek like myself was having a ball in this environment. And uh, every morning we would have breakfast um, in the hotel dining room and we'd interact with this one guy who was serving us our food and he had this glimmer in his eye. Um, and over the course of a couple of weeks, we began to have some interactions and my wife was seven months pregnant at the time and he said to my wife, how far along are you? And she says seven months and he lights up and he says, my wife is actually also seven months pregnant and we immediately had this unique connection. And um, as, as our tiny relationship begins to, to seed and develop, he invites me to spend some time with him after work on, on this rooftop in this hotel. And we're talking about World Cup, and we're talking about pregnancies, and, and then he begins to slow down his cadence, and he looks at me, and he says, John, how can you pray for your meal every morning and go look at all these holy sites when five minutes away your brothers and sisters in Christ are experiencing daily occupation and oppression? And he says, John, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. Jesus is my Messiah just like you. And I'm a Palestinian who lives in Bethany. And in that moment, you know, my worldview just breaks open. My heart melts. And I begin to, to ask the question, what have I not been told about the reality in the Holy Land? How, how come my interpretation of Israel has seen the state of Israel as synonymous with biblical Israel? And, and how, how can I literally walked around looking at these historical sites when there are human human beings, living stones, if you will, still living in the way of Jesus in this place who often don't, uh, their stories aren't told. And so to answer your question, I mean, the, the, there are remarkable uh, people who are part of the Palestinian community who have experienced a really rough go over the last hundred years, largely in part to our um, our political policies from the West that are undergirded by a theology of dispensationalism uh, that says it's okay for us to see Palestinians as less than human because they get in the way of God's divine plan. Uh, so it's an eschatological issue, then it becomes a political issue and a social issue. And and we're part of it. And, and it's not to say that we're, we're pro-Palestinian and anti-Israel. It's not to say we're pro-Israel and anti-Palestinian. I, I would say as followers of Jesus, we're pro-people. And, and if we begin to lose sight of that, then, then bad stuff happens. And friends like my like Milad are, are impacted in ways that I don't I don't want to be a part of anymore. John, I think a lot of people would push back and go, well, "Isn't isn't the Palestinian Christian Church just really a minority? Are they really having an influence in that region? Are they really sort of a, a noteworthy uh, minority or group within the Palestinian conflict?" It's a great question. I mean, their population has declined exponentially because their living situation, specifically in the West Bank and Gaza, is so dire. And so Christians are fleeing that area. And, and it's a tragedy because I think that's an opportunity for the church to be an instrument of peace in the center of a conflict. And when we don't support our brothers and sisters there, uh, we, we miss an opportunity for Jesus to do some of his best work in the middle of that conflict. But But I would say... That, that those that are there are living incredibly prophetically and it is making a huge difference. And, you know, my friend Dayud, who's a follower of Jesus and is a Palestinian, um, has had some incredible run-ins with the Israeli military. And, and he says for him and his family and his organization, they refuse to be enemies. So every day he has an opportunity to choose to see the other as an enemy. And every day he says through the lens of Jesus, I choose to see them as image bearers. And so, like, there's there's moments like that, and there's stories like that that are seeding this this movement of the kingdom of God actually expressing itself in really tangible ways that is is upending the status quo of violence there. Well, everybody, that's John Huckins, a guy who uh, he lives what he talks about.
and uh, I appreciate him. If you want to hear more about what he does, I would encourage you to go to globalimmerse.org to learn more about the Global Immersion Project. Thank you, John. Indeed. Thanks, Thanks man. Nice and softball, you know. We all know Tony, softballer. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs>